Solar for Beginners or Solar 101. This video will tell you everything you need to know about solar before you go and get quotes. If you watch it, you'll know more than 99% of Australians about solar. It really is worth watching if you're considering buying solar. So let's get started. Okay, so number one thing you need to know is the two main components of a solar system. You've got the solar panels and you've got the solar inverter. Let's start with the solar panels. The two main technologies in solar panels are monocrystalline and multicrystalline. Now, all you need to know is that in the scheme of things, it doesn't matter if you get monocrystalline or multicrystalline solar panels. They both work just as well in the Australian climate. You will get some salespeople who will try and blind you with science and say, oh, you should get mono over multi, and then you'll get exactly the same argument the other way. You should get multi over mono. For technical reasons that I'm not gonna go into in a beginner's guide, but they're all in the website, monocrystalline and multicrystalline both work just as well in an Australian climate. So don't stress about the technology type of solar panel. More important is the brand of solar panels. There is some real crap on the Australian market. So we've created a chart here. This chart shows you good solar panel brands in Australia. We have undoubtedly left off some brands that are good, but if you go with a brand on this chart, you will be fine. It's a low risk buy. The important thing to know here is the brands on the left are generally cheaper budget brands, but they'll still be fine. And the brands on the right are your more premium, more expensive brands. So if you get a quote, and they're claiming that the panels are top of the range premium, they should be brands that are towards the right of this chart. Um, if you're getting quoted brands that are towards the left, then you're probably getting more of a budget system, but it'll still be fine because all the brands on this chart are well supported in Australia. Let's move on to solar inverters. What you need to know about solar inverters is there are two types of technology and you have to choose between them. There's a thing called a central inverter, which is a box about the size of a briefcase, sits on your wall, it converts all the power from all your panels into power that your home can use. There is a second, more recent innovation, it's called a micro-inverter. This is a box about so big, it sits on each solar panel, so if you have 20 solar panels in your system, you'll have 20 micro-inverters. Because there's one per panel, they are more expensive, generally, 15, 20% more expensive for the whole system if you use microinverters. Why would you choose microinverters over a central inverter? Well, they optimize each panel individually. That's a short way of saying that you'll get a bit more energy from the system. If you have, for example, a bird poos on one of the panels, uh, the microinverters will handle that much better than a string inverter. So they are more tolerant of shade, more tolerant of dirt. The other thing is they Without getting too technical, a central inverter operates at a really high DC voltage. Now, this can be dangerous. If it's well installed, it's fine. But if something does go wrong, it can arc and you know, it can cause sparks, it can cause fire. Now, this is fine if you've got a well installed solar system, but if you're nervous about this kind of thing, and me, for example, I, for my sins, live in a house made of straw, we won't go into that. I chose micro inverters because I didn't want really high DC voltage going through the straw. So the microinverters keep everything at 240 volts. So that's the two, that's the two types of uh, inverters. You've got string inverters, you've got microinverters. There's loads of information on the site if you want to delve more into that. Generally, if you've got shading issues, microinverters can make sense. If you don't have any shading issues, you've got a simple roof, central inverters are fine. One thing you need to know about central inverters is do not let the installer mount it in direct sunlight. The good guys will not, but the sun cooks inverters. Inverters will fail early if they're mounted in the sun. Inverter brands, if you learn nothing else from this video, I would say take away the fact that the inverter brand you buy is probably the most important decision. The inverter is the component that will fail first. So solar systems should last 30, 35, 40 years. Generally, inverters will last about 15 years. A really rubbish inverter will last three years. So here's a chart of solar inverter brands. On the left, you've got the budget ones. I would pay a couple of hundred extra dollars for the SunGrow or the Zeva Solar if you want a budget inverter. 
I would highly recommend, if you're going to go premium, spending the money on an inverter, a premium inverter over a premium panel, and that's the brands over on the far right of this chart. They're really well supported in Australia, really good quality, so if you're going to pay a bit extra for premium hardware, spend it on the inverter first. The second most important thing to know before you get quotes for solar is how to measure your energy use to size your solar system. Now this, I could get into a real deep conversation about this, but the most important thing to realize is when you've got solar on your roof, the solar will get used by your house first. Any solar that your house doesn't use will get exported to the grid. If you use the solar in your house, you're saving about 28 to 35 cents a kilowatt hour because that is the price you pay for electricity from the grid. If you export your solar power, you're probably getting between six and 10 cents, it's called a feed-in tariff, from the retailer for pumping that excess solar into the grid. So obviously it's more valuable, three or four times more valuable, to use the solar in your house compared to exporting it to the grid. So what you need to know before you get solar is not just how much electricity you use in a quarter, you need to know when you use that electricity during the day. If you're not at home during the day, you're working, and you don't spend much time at home during the weekend, and you don't have a pool that's running in the day, you don't have other appliances that are running in the day, you're gonna use very little electricity in the day, and the good, honest installers will identify that, and when they calculate your payback, it will be quite long. But for a lot of people, they might have pools, um, they might be at home during the day, they might work at home during the day, they might use a lot on the weekend when they are home. For those people, solar can make a lot of sense, but you won't know unless you know not just how much electricity you use, but when you use it. So when you get quotes, the good installers will be all over that. And that really is the sign of a good installer. He will sit down and he will work out with you not just how much electricity you use, but when you use it during the day. He'll use that to calculate your estimated payback. The third thing you need to understand when you're getting quotes for solar is all about the solar rebate. The solar rebate is still alive and kicking. It's still very generous. It's a point of sale discount off the upfront price of a solar system. In a nutshell, it's worth about $700 per kilowatt installed. So a five kilowatt solar system, you're gonna get about a three and a half thousand dollar rebate. Now, before you get too excited, that rebate is already included in the prices you get quoted for solar. So let's do the math quickly. A five kilowatt solar system, if the gross price was $10,000, you're getting a three and a half thousand dollar rebate, the price you'll see advertised is six and a half thousand dollars for that system. So the solar rebate, still alive and kicking, it's already included in the prices you're quoted. Let's talk about eligibility. Everyone is eligible for the solar rebate. As long as your system is under 100 kilowatts in size, and unless you live in uh, the world's largest mansion, you're not gonna fit more than 100 kilowatts on your roof, you're eligible. It doesn't matter if you've had solar before, everyone is eligible and it's based on the amount of solar panels you put on the roof. The other thing to bear in mind is that to claim the solar rebate, you need to use Australian approved solar panels, Australian approved solar inverters, and it needs to be installed by an accredited installer. But you'd be kind of nuts to try and install a Grid Connect solar system yourself. So everyone's eligible for it, it's still generous, and it's a point of sale discount of the price of the system. Point number four, do not get the solar rebate and the feed-in tariff confused. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a thousand times. Oh, the rebate doesn't exist anymore, does it? It's been cut. People that say that are getting the rebate confused with the feed-in tariff. As we've said, the rebate is off the upfront price of the solar system, but the feed-in tariff is what you get paid for your excess solar energy when you export it to the grid. Now, back in kind of 2009, there was a really, really generous feed-in tariff. You could get 60, 66 cents in some parts of the country for every kilowatt hour you fed into the grid. This is what was reduced. Now, you can get, you can shop around, you can get between six and 12 cents for every kilowatt hour you export into the grid. So it has reduced, and this is why it's so important to size your system if you want optimal payback based on when you use your electricity. You base it on your daytime usage because you want to be using solar electricity during the day for maximum payback. So when you hear people say, oh, the solar rebate, that's gone. It hasn't, it's still alive and kicking. The feed-in tariff has reduced. 
So you've just got to be smarter about how you buy your solar so you're still getting a really good payback. And you can still get, you know, four or five year payback in many circumstances for solar, even with the reduced feed-in tariff. And that's because the solar rebate is still alive and kicking and it makes solar affordable. Solar 101.5. What you need to know about solar panel direction and angle. So you're almost certainly going to put the solar panels on your roof. The best direction to get the most energy out of your panels south of the equator, so in Australia, is north. If you point your panels north, you'll get the most energy throughout the year from those panels. But your roof may not be pointing north, or you may have west or east or even south facing roofs. Well, the interesting thing is that it can actually pay back quicker if you use a west and or an east facing roof. That was kind of meant to be a roof. Why is that? Because let's think about it. The sun rises in the east, goes over the north, and then comes down in the west. Most people use energy at the beginning of the day and the end of the day and don't use that much in the middle. So remember we talked about self-consumption. If you put panels on the east, you'll get more energy in the morning. So you're getting up, you're putting the toaster on, you're doing what you do in the morning. So you're more likely to have more energy to self-consume in the morning with east-facing solar panels. And conversely, on the west, you'll get more energy at the end of the day. When people come in the house, school's finished, work's finished, so you'll get more energy at the end of the day and you'll self-consume more. So the kind of perfect orientation, in my opinion, is you have some on the north, some on the west, some on the east, and then you get a really nice energy profile through the day. Now, don't get me wrong, you will get slightly less energy on the west and the east, that's almost certainly more than made up for by the increase in self-consumption. So, solar panel direction, north is great, but west and east is fine. And again, a good installer will be all over this. Let's just talk quickly about south-facing solar panels. South-facing solar panels in Australia do actually produce more energy than a perfectly oriented solar panel in, say, Germany. So it's not completely out of the question to put solar panels on the south if you haven't got anywhere else to put your panels but a good installer will explain exactly how much energy you should get from those south-facing solar panels so you can um, decide whether it's worth it or not. But generally, keep them on the north, the west, and the east. So that solar panel direction, the other thing is that angle of the solar panels. Very simple, the best angle for your solar panels is the angle of your roof. The optimum is the latitude of where you live. So uh, Adelaide, where I live, 35 degrees, but my roof is only 15 degrees. Do I build tilt frames to get it exactly the perfect angle? No, you'll never pay for the tilt frames because you'll only get two, three, four percent more energy from the panels by having them at the perfect angle. Um, it's a very slight variation if you're a few degrees off the latitude or even if you're 10 or 20 degrees off the latitude. So unless you've got a flat roof, then you want a slight angle on them because you want the rain to drain off them so they self-clean. Unless you've got a flat roof, just put the panels on the angle that your roof is at and you'll be fine. Solar 101.6, the cost of solar systems. How much should you expect to pay for a high quality, because there's no point buying junk, it won't last and that'll be a terrible investment, a high quality solar system. Really quickly, at the time of filming, three kilowatts, good quality components, expect to pay four to 6,000, depending on whether you go for the kind of the Hyundai level or the BMW level of inverters and panels. Five kilowatts, you're looking at between $6,000 at the lower end, $9,000 at the higher end. 10 kilowatt system, like a really big system, you're looking between about twelve dollars and $14,000. If you've got a really old switchboard um, and it's got fuses in there instead of circuit breakers, there may be a substantial cost to upgrade your switchboard, so bear that in mind. If you want micro inverters that we talked about earlier, you can add 15, 20% to that price. Solar 101, point eight, lucky last, and the one that really gets me into trouble, batteries. Should you get batteries with your solar system? Well, if you're buying a solar system for economic reasons in 2016, 2017, no. Why do I say that? Let's look at the most famous battery of them all, the Tesla Powerwall. Okay, so we did an analysis on the payback of a Powerwall. We're saying it's gonna take between 16 and 17 years to pay back. Choice did the same analysis and came up with 18 years. The Powerwall warranty is 10 years. 
So the Tesla Powerwall is not going to pay for itself in most circumstances. Uh, it's not even close to paying for itself before the warranty is expired. And with these batteries, they do degrade and they're probably not going to last much longer than the warranty. So another way of looking at it is if you divide the amount of storage that you can get in a Powerwall by how much they cost, you're paying about 50 cents for every kilowatt hour, every unit of electricity you store in that power wall, you're only saving about 25 cents by storing that solar energy in the power wall. Because remember, you do get a little bit when you export it. So batteries don't pay for themselves right now. At some point, they will. And then, go for it! You know, fill your house with batteries when they make economic sense. But right now, for economic reasons, I do not recommend you buy batteries. I recommend you get them in the future and the good thing to know is that if you want to add batteries in the future it's really easy you don't need to do anything special except buy a good quality inverter because you can use this technique called AC coupling um, and doing that is just really easy to add batteries in the future you don't need to do anything special uh, when you're buying your solar system to know that it's compatible with batteries in the future one more thing about batteries is you might be thinking Okay, they don't pay for themselves, but I want to buy them because environmentally it's the right thing to do. I'm not going to get into the reasons now, but if you add batteries to your home right now, you're increasing the carbon footprint of your home. There's a blog post that I'll link to that you, where you can read all my reasoning about that, um, but batteries don't make sense environmentally. They certainly don't make sense financially, so hold your horses until you get batteries. But I guess the really important thing is don't put off solar until batteries are affordable, because solar on its own works really well for most people. I've got a solar system, I've got a family of five, I don't have batteries, my last bill was $11, and that's with an eight cent, that's you know, quite a low feed-in tariff. So solar can work really well on its own. If you put off solar until batteries are affordable, that's three, four, five years away probably, you're gonna be locking in high bills for the next three, four, five years. And in the 21st century, with the price of solar, absolutely no need to have high bills. You don't need batteries, you just need solar, <laughs> ideally on an efficient house, and you can start really making a dent in your bills. So batteries, not worth it right now. Um, as soon as they are affordable, we'll be shouting it from the rooftops. Um, but don't worry about batteries with your solar system. Just get high quality solar, follow the tips that I've outlined, um, use good installer, it'll guide you along the way, and you can look forward to decades of low bills. So solar works, it works without batteries. If you're interested, have a look on the website, Solar Quotes, there's heaps of information there. Just go there for the information. If you've read enough information to feel comfortable getting quotes, then we make it really easy for you to get quotes off the high quality solar, off pre-vetted installers.